Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're having a great day and welcome to the Tundra Dude 34 YouTube channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you know every time I put up a new video and or a live stream. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, a sad day. Today, the Capstone 2022 in Windchill Pearl has gone back to Toyota. So up front, I do want to say thank you to Toyota and Drive Shop for allowing me to review the Capstone, the new flagship Tundra for this generation. It was definitely a good time and I learned a little bit. So today we're going to talk about some pros and cons and we're going to finish off with two main questions. Number one, does the Capstone make sense with the Platinum and 1794? And number two, would I personally buy a Capstone? So through my week with the Capstone, I made a list as I was going with pros and cons uh, as they were happening so I wouldn't forget any. I will tell you I achieved 16 MPG uh, with my week with the capstone, but I want to tell you, an hour of that 16 MPG uh, was sitting while I was doing the live stream, the truck was on, so it was cycling between engine and battery, uh, and it was up around 18 and change and went down because of that hour, but I didn't want to go back and reset the meter, uh, you know, after driving on it already for a few days, so keep that in mind, it was 16 MPG, I cycled a lot between normal drive mode and Sport Plus drive mode. Sport Plus is a lot of fun, uh, but this had about 1,400 miles on it, so it's not necessarily broken in. You can achieve better gas mileage with these iForce Max trucks, but I will tell you from someone who has driven them, they're a lot of fun to drive, and it's way more fun putting your foot down on the pedal than going nice and easy. But if you wanted to, and you get out on the highway and you've had the truck for a while and it's not new to you anymore, you can definitely achieve better numbers out there. Look on some of the forums, you will see people achieving way higher than I was able to, uh, you know, in this last week. But once again, I did have the truck on the entire time I did my hour live stream a few days ago, and it was cycling between battery and engine, and that really brought down uh, that MPG number. So just keep that in mind. Want to be fair to the truck uh, and let you guys know everything that went on with it. But let's start with some pros here. And if you've driven the 2022 Tundra, and you want to jump in here and let anyone know down in the comments how you feel about some of the things I'm saying, please do, because I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Pros right off the bat, suspension, frame, and steering. Now, when I got into this truck, one of the big things I was looking for, being I've driven other 2022 Tundras, is how would those big 22s with the low profile tire hurt or help, pretty much more hurt, the ride when it comes to this new generation Tundra. Every new generation Tundra I've driven, um, it's been a pleasure as far as, you know, the new frame, the suspension, everything is really tight. It feels like it all goes down the road together. There's no real body sway anymore. There's no brake dive. It's a nice driving experience. So I was really looking to see how those big 22 inch uh, tires and I should say wheel and tire setup would do with this truck. And I gotta be honest, um, I was surprised because it was a lot better than I thought it would be. Did you still feel a little bit of bumps here and there? At low speeds, you definitely did, um, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. At no time did I feel like I was in an extremely rough ride situation with this truck, and I went on some really bad roads with it just to kind of see when I would take the truck uh, for a ride off camera, just to get a feel, some feedback without the camera being on, kind of paying attention to the truck under me. Uh, you know, when you got that low speed, you definitely felt, um, you know, that low profile tire, uh, not soak up the bumps very well. So keep that in mind. Uh, you know, that was a pro for me because again, in every one of these 2022 Tundras, the suspension, the steering is super tight now. There's drive modes, like I said before, uh, and the steering will change with those drive modes. Uh, but overall, just a pleasurable experience as far as drivability, which is the most important part of the truck. You want to make sure you can get down the road and, you know, have as an enjoyable experience as you can with a pickup truck. Last generation feels like your classic pickup truck. You do have that body sway, maybe a little brake dive, depending on the suspension you have and the setup. Um, every one of these I've driven so far, it's, uh, it's just a whole different animal out there, and it definitely feels nice getting down the road. So that's got to be pro number one as far as the feel of the truck. Uh, number two, I already said drive modes, but the iForce Max engine is unbelievable. Um, the regular iForce, it, you know, it's no slouch itself, but the iForce Max is where Toyota uh, wants you to pay attention to. It's kind of like when the 5.7 liter came out in 07 for the Tundra. Sure, it had the 4 liter V6. Sure, it had the 4.7 uh, from 07 to 09, but that 5.7 is where they wanted you to really pay attention. That was their primary engine. That's the same way I feel with this iForce Max. Um, it's just a pleasure to drive. It's no V8. Uh, it has a ton of power. 
you could feel the power instantly. I constantly compare it to a supercharged Tundra. I had a 2017 supercharged Tundra. Um, and they're, don't get me wrong, very different trucks. But as far as power delivery, uh, when you're getting down the road, that instant pull of a supercharged Tundra is very close to this. The only difference is the supercharged Tundra, everything was loud. You felt every gear shift. This is very quiet. Um, gets through the gears without you feeling the truck shift or anything like that with this new 10-speed transmission. And if you have it in certain drive modes like Sport S Plus or Sport, uh, you know, you're really going to feel that truck pull you down the road. And when you put it in Sport or Sport S Plus, uh, it starts to make the turbos come alive a little bit. You can hear a little more whistling from that. So, you know, with some modification, if you're into the turbo whistle, you could probably get this thing going really good and hearing it really loud, especially with some less restrictive air intake boxes on there or something along those lines. But the truck gets down the road real nice. The engine is always ready to go. It never gets lost in gears or anything. It's always just boom, down the road. So you gotta give a high five to the iForce Max. Whether you like V6 or not, the power is definitely there for sure. Um, another one, and this is actually in pro and con. We'll do the pro version of it first. The unique capstone interior and the mood lighting. I like everything about the fact that the 2022 and next generation Tundra has interiors that are truly unique to the trim. And the capstone is no different. It's the flagship, it's the big money Tundra, it's the Denali of the lineup, right? So when you get in there, you're gonna know right away that you're in a capstone. Um, it has off-white, wood grain, black, uh, just everything, it really does flow together really nice and it has a blue mood lighting that goes around the truck and capstone lights up as well. So at night, it looks really good. But the unique interior of it, I like the vibe they were trying to give with all of these 2022 Tundras, but especially the capstone, you definitely 100% knew you were in a capstone because nothing looks like that interior for sure. And I am an advocate, an advocate, and I always will be. I hope people get annoyed at me saying this constantly. Black headliner, huge pro. This is the first Tundra I've driven with the black headliner. It ties it all together. As far as the look on the inside, with the shade open, everything, it just works better. Black headliner should be in all trims of Tundra. All of it, at least an option down low. Right now it's only available, Capstone, Platinum, 1794. TRD Pro, gray headliner. SR5, gray headliner. Limited, gray headliner. The black uh, headliner looked amazing, I'm telling you. Especially with the dash, because all these dashes have a lot of black in them. So when it comes up the pillars, right into a black headliner, it just looked well put together. Toyota, help me out, black headliner on the Tundra. Another thing you probably won't hear, but a huge pro for me, easy to use controls. And what I mean by that, they redesigned everything. 12 inch digital gauge cluster, 14 inch infotainment screen, they redesigned it all, but it's still very easy to use. And if you pay attention to the buttons in the truck, you will notice it is Toyota. It's the same buttons we've always seen. It's the same little images on the buttons. Not much has changed. Everything is very easy to use. And after a few days, you start to notice where everything's at. You don't even need to look anymore. Uh, the climate control system is like that of a Camry. Uh, everything is extremely, extremely easy to use. Another pro would be infotainment. It's not hard to use at all. I didn't have any issues with uh, toggling through stuff. I didn't have any connectivity issues using Apple CarPlay. Uh, just overall, everything is really bumped up when it comes to uh, the experience with audio and your infotainment because we know last generation, nobody was happy with the JBL sound system. Well, the JBL sound system is highly improved. So if that is something that matters to you a lot, that's the way you wanna go. We have the subwoofer in there, an amp is in there for the JBL sound system. It is well done, um, but yeah, everything inside the truck is just very easy to use. There was no confusion whatsoever. There's a little dial down by the shifter uh, that controls your drive modes and your tow haul and everything like that. And even on the 12 inch digital gauge cluster, to your left, you will see the same option screens that you see in other Toyotas. So it's not out of left field, it's not, Completely brand new. There's a lot of Toyota-esque stuff inside these trucks. Very, very simple to use for sure. Now we're gonna shoot over to the cons. There's not a lot of cons here. The truck was pretty awesome, um, but there are some things I do wanna point out. And again, comment below with your uh, thoughts on any of these. Remember in the pros I said unique capstone interior? Well, here's a con, unique capstone interior. And the reason I say that, although it is extremely awesome, the way that it is the capstone interior and nothing else, there is a lot of white in there. Little off-white look with the wood interior, with the wood grain interior, I should say. 
The problem is there's a lot of that white in high touch areas of the truck. Like the center console where you will lean your arm, it was already dirty. Uh, the headrest on the passenger seat was already dirty. This truck only has about 1,400 miles on it. There was a lot of spots that were already dirty. So if you have a capstone or you want a capstone, buy yourself some wipes because you're gonna have to constantly wipe it down because the white is everywhere in there um, and it's gonna be kinda hard to keep clean. If you're cool with that, it is worth it because it is such a unique looking interior. This probably, I made a video about this earlier in the week. It's gonna depend on your lifestyle. That's gonna matter if um, you're buying this truck and you're someone that does a lot of outdoor things. Maybe you have animals, kids, they play sports. It's gonna get dirty real quick. So know that going in. Unique look, yes, but uh, all of that white in the high touch points could be a real pain down the road. So if you don't mind cleaning it with wipes, you'll probably be all right, but just I want you to know that up front. I say this in every single 2022 Tundra. This is a con. They need to throw out the current design and start over again. Wireless phone charger never keeps the phone charging. Every time you hit a bump, it disrupts the charge. They have one little piece. You lean the phone up into it. It's on an angle. I like the idea. It has one little piece to lean on on the side. They need to make two pieces, maybe one like a little slider. So depending on how big your phone is, that will hold the phone in place. That's all you need to do and everything would be fine. But that uh, wireless phone charger in all three of the 2022s that I reviewed for a week at a time, it just didn't work well. I like the idea. I love the idea, I should say, of the wireless phone charger. We just need a little plastic piece to hold the phone on one side a little bit better. Another one you guys will laugh at here for cons for me, automatic side steps. My wife loves side steps. I like the look of no side steps. I just hop right in, grab the driver, grab handle, and we're good. Um, automatic side steps work for that because I like the look of no, and she likes to use them. So every time you open the door, they come down, you get in. I busted my ankle like three times because I'm just, I open the door and go. I had to learn to wait. You can shut them off, which is a good thing. I'd like to see down the road and I'd like to hear from some capstone owners or, or uh, you know, other trims because you can get those on other trims as well. How are those automatic steps when it comes to, I don't know, maybe mud getting caught up in there, if you off-road rocks, stuff like that, uh, you know, slushy crap from the road when it starts to snow, like all the salt. Does everything get caught up in there? Will it hold the side step from going all the way up? I don't know. But from my experience this week, um, if it makes the wife happy, I'm good. Will I be buying automatic side steps? No thanks. If the truck's too high, I'll just get like end fabs or something. But I really like the look of no side steps, but that's just me. But it is the capstone, it is fully loaded, and uh, you know, it needs to have it for sure. All right, next on the con list here, I have the, this is a stupid little one, but again, for the little things when you're driving down the road, this is the stuff that will matter. There is a cover over the cup holders. You push it, it opens up, and there are your cup holders. They are great, they hold big drinks, small drinks, there's little tabs in there to hold the cup, no matter how big the size. But the issue, there's always a space issues in these trucks when it comes to storage and, and you know that kind of thing. The lid is super slippery, so if you close the lid, it has that nice wood grain look, but if you put anything on it, it's sliding right off. They should make that a grippy surface, um, you know, and just so you can put your phone there, your glasses there, whatever, but it's completely useless once you close it. So that's something that, uh, you know, I noticed when my glasses or cell phone went flying 16 times, uh, just put a little grip surface. And if you buy the truck, you could do that yourself. Uh, you know, but when you're paying $78,000, you would hope there'd be a grippy surface right there. So write that down for future reference. Center, and I've heard this from a few different people, and this is the first time I agree uh, in the three 2022s that I tested. Center console lid. It seems cheap. When you're going down the road and you're hitting bumps, you could hear it rattle. This is the first time I've heard this in the truck, and this is the highest trim Tundra, so I was a little shocked. If you look at the old center consoles in last generation, they actually felt, um, you know, like they could take a beating. It was one simple clip up and it opens, uh, they, did, they felt sturdy, they didn't feel loose, uh, there wasn't a lot going on. The new one, you know, it has a sliding tray on it. You could go down into the center console without actually opening the door, uh, but it just didn't feel as sturdy and long lasting as last generation. And when I was driving down the road, you did hear it rattle quite a bit. So gotta call out that center console lid. Now those are my cons. That's all I got so far with the cons. This is the question of the week, the number one question. Does the capstone belong when there's already a platinum 
1794 trim, which are supposed to be the top trims of Tundra when it comes to luxury. I feel it belongs, but going forward, there needs to be something that differentiates the capstone more, all right? It gets a unique grill. It gets the big 22 inch wheels. It has a unique interior, but so does other trims, but it's basically a Tundra that's fully loaded, okay? But all of those options you could get on the 1794 and Platinum. Semi-aniline seats are great, but I'm sitting in a 1794 2022 seat right now, and it's just as comfortable. So for me, and this is a me thing, and I really wanna hear what you guys think. At a price tag of $77,000, $78,000, depending on if you get the AVS suspension or not, um, I need to see more differentiation between the luxury trims. And that's just a me thing. I could go get a $1,794 for $62,000, $63,000 that is loaded with luxury features. Same thing with the Platinum. But I need to know why I'm spending an extra $10,000 and it can't just be for 22 inch wheels. Um, I think the capstone looks great. I've driven the windshield pearl is what I had for the week. And at the dealer walk the other day, I saw a magnetic gray metallic capstone. Magnetic gray metallic is way better looking than the windshield pearl on capstone in my opinion. It's gonna depend on color. I think that magnetic gray metallic really works well with the chrome and silver and the black they have going on on the outside of the body. So that's gonna depend on you know what you're into when it comes to color. I really like the look and the accent of the capstone-esque stuff on the outside with that magnetic gray look. It might just need you know a darker color. But as far as does it belong, absolutely. I like that it's the flagship and everything like that, but I still need to see more things that differentiate Capstone from 1794 and Platinum. Right now for me, it's too close. Can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about that one. Now, the question is, would you buy? Now for me, I'm a, I'm a no on the Capstone, but not because I dislike the Capstone. I like more of the off-road look than the luxury look. Um, you know, I like the way the TRD Pro looks. The TRD off-road package adds cool features to, you know, SR5 Limited 1794. Uh, that's more the direction for me. If I was into the luxury and into, uh, you know, that high-end look, this truck is beautiful. And I'll be honest with you, those 22-inch wheels, they did grow on me over the week with the truck. Um, the pictures don't do these trucks justice. I say that all the time. You got to see them in person. Big chrome unique grill for capstone, not a big fan of chrome, but when you put the body color surround around it and there's a little black accenting in the grill, it actually looks really good. So those are my pros and cons, some basic ones. Truck was a lot of fun. Um, again, once again, I thank Toyota for giving me time with it. Cameras as far as the eye can see, 360, got the camera up front, you got two cameras in the back, you could see inside the bed, you could see down by the trailer if you're towing. Um, they've upgraded this truck doing a, a lot of things that we asked for when it comes to uh, features, panoramic roof, the thing's fully loaded. So let me know what you think about the capstone. Would you purchase the capstone? And if not, what would be the trim of 2022 slash 2023 Tundra would you purchase? Until next time, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook at TundraDude34, TundraDude34, gmail.com. Guys, have a great day. Be safe and be well.